The map Recharge is now back into the ranked rotation when it comes to Halo Infinite. If you guys don't know, it was recently taken out due to a big exploit of geometry not really working as it's supposed to, but now it should be back. That's why your game is having an update right now. So great to see that Recharge, one of the best maps in Halo Infinite, is back in the game. If you're unaware of what the issue was, check this out. Yeah, this guy's crouching right here on top of one of the pistons, but not taking any damage. So there was some weird kind of geometry issue, so they took it out temporarily for about a week from the rotational playlist of the ranked modes and stuff like that. But now it has been fixed and so greatly improved the ranked experience of Halo Infinite. I'm very happy about that. Really quick tur turnaround, honestly. A really great addition to Halo MCC, which is really weird that MCC gets this little promotion here, but there is now a Fall Guys little jelly bean, I think is what they call it, or jelly bean, I think is what they're called in Fall Guys. You can now have that as a backpack in Halo 3 and the MCC starting today. All you need to do is log on and then you have it. Pretty sweet. Again, I just find it odd that like we don't have this in Halo Infinite. This is in the MCC. We get this kind of content. You'd think they want to promote that through M Halo Infinite, but hey, you know, I guess there's not really any way to do that right now at the moment. But I guess, you know, 343 is kind of heads down, just trying to you know, make quality of life improvements and improve the quality of the game to where it's in a good state where we could add in these fun kind of bits of, you know, cross promotion and things like that. But it seems like literally there's cross promotion in everywhere except in Halo Infinite, it almost feels like. Uh, but hey, you know, it is what it is right now. But right now in the MCC, log on, get your little jelly bean guy as your backpack. That's what I did recently. It was fun. There is going to be an absolutely massive Halo event finishing out this year at actual Halo Fest along with the World Championships here in Seattle. Uh, recently, the tickets just went on sale. You have two different tickets. You have a three-day pass and you also have a three-day VIP pass as well. Uh, the VIP pass comes with a bunch of extra stuff in there, but Tashi kind of helped kind of break down exactly what's going to be taking part of this whole thing. It sounds really awesome. Yesterday, the head of HCS, Tashi, tweeted this out and said that the Halo World Championship will be a yearly Halo Fest, which is like, okay, now you have my attention. Regardless of why you love Halo, we want you to feel welcome at the event and feel like there's something for you. So they added in panels, they have meet and greets, cosplay contests, open play, and much more. And of course, also just, you know, the world finals where, where, where teams are playing for a million dollar cash prize pool when it comes to Halo Infinite. So that's some really exciting stuff. Tickets are on sale right now for this event, as well as the HTS Orlando event happening in September. Uh, this world finals ha event is happening from um, October 20th through the 23rd. So get your passes while you can. Tickets sold out for Raleigh. Tickets also sold out for Kansas City. So you want to jump on top of this as soon as possible. Right now, the uh, the regular three-day pass is selling for $75. The VIP pass, which just has actual perks in it, which is pretty nice, uh, running for $250. But again, this is also just the World Finals on top of having a Halo Fest. So there's a lot of great stuff in, being packaged in with this deal. So definitely want to check it out if you can. Now, a big discussion that was happening yesterday with Halo was this article from VGC. The title reads that Halo Infinite's melee desync issue aren't being fixed yet because the devs who are able to fix it are being allocated somewhere else says a 343 developer we covered this in yesterday's video i won't bore you with all the little details but essentially people started just flaming 343 and going off the walls about kind of like different theories of why 343 is not fixing a literally like a game breaking issue with the multiplayer experience this all spawned from a comment from a 343 dev over on reddit basically saying like hey you know we would work on it right now but we're working on other things at the moment that have vicarious benefits from also working on that thing that we're working on right now and it turned out that thing that they're working on right now is well campaign co-op as we do know flighting is coming around very soon Unishek hit up Twitter and actually replied to me in a Twitter thread which is really nice and actually provided information that confirmed my assumptions here saying that yes for right now most networking resources are focused on helping deliver a quality experience for online campaign co-op however this doesn't mean we're ignoring desync the team is still constantly investigating reports as they come in both efforts require lots of TLC which is very true networking is incredibly complicated and also very complex to where like it can just like simple things can just easily break the game so uh, that's kind of why like we're not seeing like them directly work on desync is because they're trying to get campaign co-op for us guys to play which right now i would say for the most part that the desync yeah it does happen 
but I much rather have co campaign co-op as soon as possible rather than like working on these little details of occasional issues that happen with desync. Of course, some people experience it more than others. I haven't really experienced it a whole lot, but it has happened previously. But even though they're working on campaign co-op online networking, there actually are some vicarious benefits and a former developer at 343 currently a build engineer at Apex Legends right now kind of gives a little bit of insight on what we're talking about here saying that there are some vicarious benefits which they were mentioned within that reddit post uh, basically just kind of confirming that what we're saying here that like yes not working directly on the issue of desync does not mean that they're not working on it at all saying any bugs may be dependent on other number of bugs to be fixed first you don't have to be working directly on a fix to specific to a specific bug to be making progress to solve it which this guy, you know, of course, he was also speculating on the whole process because this is before Unishike actually replied to us over on Twitter. But again, this is kind of just confirmed that, like, there, he has better insights to what development processes actually are because he actually is part of the development team and stuff like that. So we all can be armchair developers here online, but, you know, we try to really focus on what the experts are saying. And that's why I try to provide that information for you. While we're on the subject of campaign co-op, it is going to be coming around here very soon. We've seen that the Xbox Insider Build flights have actually reached recently received a small minor update probably just like some ui changes or something like that so that means that like things are coming around the corner here very soon if you haven't updated your halo insider profile you definitely want to do that if you've gotten any new pc parts like myself you want to update your profile there as well or got a new hardware like a new xbox or something you definitely want to update your profile it gives you probably a better chance to get involved with these flights as well but how soon can we expect this flighting to happen? Well, I think very, very soon, as in most likely, well, basically this month, because we're talking, we're basically at the end of June right now, so we should be going into July here really quickly. And it says right here that campaign network co-op, as well as campaign mission replay should be happening late August is when that feature was going to launch meaning that we should begin the flight in July if they want to get some actual data and actually be able to respond to player feedback about this to give 343 enough time to make any kind of necessary changes that will happen. I'm assuming that most of this will probably be tied to more just like networking and make sure just things are not completely broken. I guarantee there's gonna be some people out there who are not gonna be too happy with how things are going with the campaign playlist. There's always something going on that people don't like about Halo, but it's always good to give proper feedback about these kind of things so then 343 knows what players want and that's gonna be a really great thing to see. And of course, once we get some hardcore information about when these fights are gonna happen, what's the content involved with it, are there going to be multiple mass chiefs? Are you able to bring your campaign or your multiplayer Spartan into the campaign experience? Well, we'll have to find out soon enough, guys. And I guarantee you, as soon as we get that information, I will share it with you guys all here on this channel. But if you're new to the channel and any content from me recently, check out this place right here. I've got a link to all my gaming news and informational videos right there. Thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.